Welcome to MCF's A Perspective Moment. Hi, I'm Dave Harris, CEO of MCF Advisors. The title of today's Perspective Moment is, What's Next? Perhaps a good name for this decade is the tumultuous decade. The definition of tumultuous is full of tumult, riotousness, marked by disturbance and uproar. Since existence, our country has experienced tumultuous decades approximately every 50 years or so. And it just so happens that the 2020s is a 50 year time cycle for us to experience again. We've identified five major themes that are all clashing during this next 10 years. These themes aren't necessarily new, but they are reoccurring in each of the past 50 year cycle time periods. Number one, demographic changes. Baby boomers time is passing on. For 50 years, we've been in control of our culture, spending patterns, political and economic decisions. And whether we like it or not, by the end of the decade, the millennials will be in control. Their population numbers now outweigh the boomers, their economic powers arrived, and their influence is a force. Number two, geographic changes. Remote work and virtual communication has been happening for several years. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has quickened the pace of acceptance and application by warp speed. In four months, we've become reliant upon it. As remote workplace takes hold, people will likely migrate towards more affordable or desired areas of the country to live in, causing major impacts to real estate, specifically residential, retail, and office space, transportation and business travel needs, and legacy state and city infrastructures left behind. The third theme is income inequality. We've been seeing the stress points of income inequality of the past few years. This trend is likely to get worse before it explodes. <clears throat> the real income of the average American hasn't increased in 20 years, which has caused a spending power drain. The cry out for a national minimum income per individual or family is getting much worse, hearsay across the country. Deglobalization is number four. For the past several years, international trade wars have been ongoing. Countries are looking for ways to protect their own, so to speak, versus being supportive of world trade. Then the pandemic hit, causing massive disruptions of world supply chains, which then caused shortage of parts and products and medical drugs and materials and shipping. Governments and corporations are making big changes to their strategic supply chains, hence bringing a much larger share back to their homeland, i.e. becoming protectionists. And the last fifth theme is the government debt explosion. All major countries are leveraging themselves beyond anyone's imagination. Here in the U.S., we've doubled our nation's debt in just three months to its largest level since World War II. In March, over 50% of the world's non-U.S. government debt was carrying a negative yield, meaning depositors were paying to have an institution hold their money instead of getting interest. And who's to say that in the United States, we don't go to negative interest rates. When does it end? Well, these five themes aren't necessarily new, but they're rather reoccurring in cycles throughout our country's history. So let's do a brief replay of American 50-year cycles. Our current 50-year cycle started in the 1980s with Reaganomics, capitalists shifted control with the American labor force, income tax rates reduced, interest rates being following for the entire 40-year period. Baby boomers have moved heaven and earth Enormous wealth has been created, yet with much strife. Now go back another 50 years, starting with the 30s. The Great Depression, the New Deal of social support programs, Federal Reserve guaranteeing bank deposits. World War II brought us out of the Depression by putting America back to work. Then came the 50s of Ozzie and Harriet. Then the 60s, bringing fights between peace and war. Labor union strikes against the capitalists. Nixon resigning from the presidency, and ending in the 70s with price wars, inflation, race and religion rebellion, and interest rates ending at 20% prime rate. Another 50-year rollback ends with the Roaring Twenties, which ended by the Great Depression. The start of the era was a railroad and steel industry boom of the late 1800s, which was the green shoot from the aftermath of the Civil War destruction. Then, of course, the previous 50-year cycle was ending with the Civil War era in 1865. 
the time of revolution between the Northerners' manufacturing base, supported with German and Irish immigrant workers, versus the large, wealthy farmers' plantation owners needing slaves to do their work. The war ended with economic havoc and the largest loss of armed forces in American history. 650,000 men and women died, which is more than all of our other wars combined. We'll keep on rolling back another 50 years. You come to the Andrew Jackson era of the 1825s. Jackson was the first American president that wasn't from the wealthy Anglo-Saxon British descent. Jackson was from a poor family in the South and became a war hero as general in defeating the British in the War of 1812. The common farmer and pioneer wanted a voice and started to cry for less federal government and more local control. As you know, this controversy ended the Civil War 40-some years later. And our first cycle was, of course, started with the American Revolution 50 years prior. Our start in 1776 produced an impressive nation, one that today has become so wealthy compared to our peers that our lifestyles, our tastes, our engineering, the American way have set the example for many. By observing our history, we can see that America molts its skin and remakes itself on about a 50-year cycle. During these tumultuous times, much social, political, and economic change happens. In other words, out with the old and in with the new. America isn't afraid to change, and we seem to survive these deep, inflicted personal wounds and come out stronger. Well, so what does that mean for investors? Well, for the time being, the equity markets will likely continue to increase in value. There's a huge amount of liquidity in our economy, despite the business casualties happening all around us. The government stimulus has been unprecedentedly large and swift. So for the next six to 12 months, this liquidity injection has to go somewhere and much will continue to be invested. Of course, this momentum could be interrupted by a change of the virus curve or political landscape, so we must stay nimble. Well, I look forward to sharing our investment views and directions to navigate the tumultuous 2020s in our upcoming perspective moments of what's next. Remember, successful investing is about managing risk, not avoiding it. Take care.